Good morning, all. This is the Suburban Sentinel with a continuation of our series entitled The Big Shift, where we are examining the social, political, and economic changes the world is likely to face on the horizon. Today, I want to continue on with our subset on economics and talk about corporations not mom and pop corporations, but the big multinational corporations that dominate our economy in the Western world. Today, a handful of large corporations wield tremendous wealth and power. These are essentially faceless and stateless entities that run on and exist only for the purpose of making more money. They use their wealth and power to either influence government policies around the world or flat out buy politicians. These corporations leave a lot of social, economic, and environmental damage in their wakes. Some people argue that having powerful corporations is just a natural consequence of the free market. A few of these people even argue that this is a good thing. The question is, does it have to be this way? Are all powerful corporations something we should or at least need to live with? And in my opinion, I think not. So let's get into how we got to where we are at the moment. First of all, what is a corporation? Well, in its essence, a corporation is an entity with a separate legal existence that has certain rights and responsibilities, just like what we would call a natural person. Corporations, most corporations, exist for transacting business, whether that's a for-profit business or a not-for-profit business. Let's take a very brief look at some of the fundamental aspects of corporate entities. Again, they have a separate legal existence. And one of the things that makes corporations attractive to investors is that there's what's called liability protection. The owners of a corporation, often referred to as shareholders, are not liable, not personally liable, for the debts and obligations of the corporation. So if the corporation is going to go out of business or owes other people or other companies a ton of money, the corporate owners are insulated from those liabilities. In early America, our founding fathers were highly suspicious of corporations. British companies wielded tremendous power and influence over English policies, and the colonies suffered as a consequence. So, although America did recognize the corporate form, the power of corporations was severely limited under early American law. Corporations were generally only granted charters for a specific purpose that was a high-risk type of venture that most people would not want to invest their personal assets in, and these ventures most often had a greater public purpose. So corporations were usually chartered for big projects like building roads or building canals. As the decades progressed, the restrictions on corporations were gradually lifted, and then we ended up where we are today where, according to the United States Supreme Court, essentially corporations are people, 
corporations by policy and they commit crimes with relative impunity. So why is all of this important? Well, in my opinion, if we don't find a way to somehow put this genie back in the bottle or limit the influence of corporations, we will at some point be fully enslaved by these corporate entities. Don't get me wrong, I am not anti-business or against the free market economy. I just believe that our founding fathers' suspicions of allowing too much wealth and power to be concentrated into too few hands was very wise. Uh, right now, I'm not offering any solutions, and this is not a rant. I just think it's important to understand where we are and how we got here before trying to predict the future. So that's all I'll say about corporations at the moment. Thanks for watching. This is the Suburban Sentinel. Please thumbs up and subscribe if you like what you see. Questions and enlightening comments are always welcome and we will continue on with this series in future videos. Be safe everybody.